Faut peut-être mettre du coup toi. Bon. Alors, ouais, pour le moment, il n'y a même pas. Y a même pas de problème. Hello and welcome to this uh, this uh, web uh, webinar on customization ahead or how to get beyond the PowerPoint. Today uh, we'll go on different uh, on a very plan that I will present you in a minute. And first, uh, my colleague and I are going to introduce ourselves. So, so Pierre Gorin. I'm a, a project manager at uh, LGM Digital and I'm mainly working on projects relative to the creation of training training courses. So the, the, the analysis and design phases of the Adi process, which uh, Luca will show you in a few minutes. And also on the development of uh, several training materials, mainly uh, e-learnings and, um, and media-based uh, training material, uh, which is the, the subject of the today's uh, webinar. Uh, bad. First, we will go back on the adding methodology that you might uh, have known of uh, through the previous webinars, and we will focus mainly on the development part of the adding methodology. Next, uh, we will talk about our training materials. Yes, I was unmute. Uh, we'll see uh, our training materials, and we will present the team and the skills that it gathers. Next, uh, we will go on the use case development and a few demonstrations of our different training materials. And then we will conclude um, uh, a, few, a few points, a couple of points, and uh, you, we will answer your questions. If you have any question, don't hesitate to use the question channel that is uh, right uh, next to the chat channel that you have on the, on the browsers. And we will answer those questions at the end of the webinar. Uh, let's get started with uh, the ADI methodology that I will present uh, yeah, in case you know it. Uh, the first phase of the ADI methodology that is composed of five phases. The first phase is analysis, uh, which is related to our creativity room uh, we are actually in. Uh, so the analysis phases wants to clarify the course takes in the context with the with the client with the customer and uh, is to pinpoint precise learning objectives for the learners and so we can build uh, the, the course we, we want to create next comes the design phase that defines the pertinent learning modes and the tools and to fulfill those learning objectives that we pinpointed in the analysis phase. Then the development phase that we will focus on, uh, that is to discover the learning tools and master the related media production process. So this is where we're going to build and make the module flesh and bones. Then the implementation phase where we are going to, well, implement the the, the learning module, the learning course, onto uh, an LMS, a learning management system, for example. And then the evaluation that comes to check the course was efficient, well, if its quality was good enough, if there are points that you have to go back on to, to improve its efficiency, its efficiency sorry, and on this part, on this uh, webinar, we will focus on the development phase related to the, to the learning medias, to the learning tools and materials that we are going to present to So for these training materials, there are a lot of them and we couldn't possibly present them all. So we're going to pinpoint a few of them and explain the well, the, the quality, the pros and cons of the different materials. So first, we'll start with the classic e-learning uh, that require infographics uh, that shows 
different learning contents on the screen and the learner evolves the learner trainee as you as you wish to call it evolves into this environment but the features of quite limited uh, if you do not have uh, enough resources financial resources to to develop this learning but the learning actually can include the different materials i'm going to follow with so it becomes more and more complex and well appreciable next is the video it can be uh, we're talking here about uh, short videos of the camera uh, well, it uh, it includes with three uh, D cinematics as well. We can put it together. Uh, it includes. To, it allows to make a notion, a process. Uh, it makes it comprehensible for the learner, and well, it makes it easily broadcastable, and it can go from a simple motion design to uh, a real video to three D cinematics as we. Do as we see it. Uh, next are reality, virtual reality and virtual visits that are very useful uh, in maintenance or with strict, process, uh, strict processes that your learners will have to follow uh, from A to Z. So it's very useful in these cases and uh, it ensures a total immersion for better comprehension. Uh, next to this there is the augmented reality, uh, the, the future the future debates uh, VR versus AR. The augmented reality is quite good to inquire and inform intuitively and in a contextual manner, and it is very useful as everyone has uh, a smartphone. Many people have tab uh, have tablets, so it's very very easy to develop content on this one now and it will become easier and easier. And last but not least, uh, the very famous learning or serious game, as it is always known, as it is also known as, uh, that makes the course very living and the involvement of the learner is, well, even superior in compared to the other, the other medias, maybe except a virtual visit, but it can it allows to put a red wire that will make the learner uh, learn better and easier, and of course it will it will uh, also impact the effects, the emotional effects. This is very pleasant to play, and if some of your colleagues could say, well, it is not like that that you train yourself uh, professionally. Science has been quite clear. It has to be done well, but everyone likes gaming. Uh, as for the team, there are multiple skills and multiple people, and most of our people uh, have a few skills for themselves. Uh, we can talk about training designers that will uh, that will uh, that will sorry act on the on every part actually of the process, and they will. They will pinpoint the objectives, build a storyboard frame that Pierre is going to talk and to tell you about later. Uh, they are video makers that will do the, the short videos, the, the 3D graphic designers and designers that will do for the, the other type of cinematics or virtual visits, etc. The e-learning specialists that are going to build the module flesh and bone with uh, different different software as, uh, as Articulate Storyline, for example. So there are many talents and the scene is overviewed by an operational manager, Romain Beaumont, that you may know if you watched the French version this morning or other webinars that I could, I could uh, attend to, as well as two DTI, the Innovation and Technical Direction, two DTI job heads, the job head for training, that is Jill Baudou, and the job head for digitalization, that is Nicolas Baudou. So, we come to the question, what makes a good e-learning? And of course, there is not only one good answer about it. There might not even be a good answer, but there are a few characteristics of an e-learning that we will highlight today. And we'll start with the multimodality that plays in two, two different games. Uh, the fact of e-learning or face-to-face -face 
blended learning that makes the two. So the, the manner that is conducted uh, a course and uh, the support you will use it can be PowerPoint, it can be uh, one of the different materials, video, uh, e-learning, sorry, virtual visits, augmented reality, etc. There is the cognitive load you have to take care about so you learn, uh, your learner can more easily learn the key information that you want to transmit. So all your learning content has to be filtered and I thought the mask was well, quite a good analogy. You have to filter those information so only the key information remain and your learner can learn the essential, well, idea. And then the storytelling, uh, particularly involved in the series games or virtual, etc., that makes a red wire more easily followed and that involves. And, uh, in a story that, well, we at least try to make it appealing. It's very good for transfer, for the skill transfer, when you're, you're learning your learning skills. Right, so I'm now going to hand to, I'm giving the hand to Pierre, so. First part of the presentation, the second part based on the um, use case. So we are talking here about e-learning development, and we are when we are saying e-learning development, there are a lot of type of e-learning, and it's almost uh, every time difficult to um, what type of e-learning you want to develop, based mainly on media. So the point today is to have a small use case uh, where, let's say, you are the the head of a training. Um, in an automobile industry. So you are in charge on, of developing training courses, but also uh, to develop the learning modalities, the learning materials uh, relative to the, to the training courses. So this is the example that will uh, appear on the screen. Uh, so when you start the development, you take the, the training plan as it is uh, developed uh, through the design phase of ADI process. And here is an example of an external training plan uh, where you can see we have to develop um, a, a safety module relative to mechanic workshop safety uh, with two main uh, learning objectives, which is explain applicable safety rules, the first one, and enforce mitigation measure as the second and for several reasons, such as uh, the volume of learner or the budget, we choose that this one will be a new learning. Uh, the first part will be about theory and the second part will be about practice. Here we are uh, speaking about e-learning practice. So this is not on a, on a workshop, on the, on the actual environment, but um, on the e-learning. So concretely, what are we going to develop uh, based on this training plan. Uh, we have a, a process on two step. And the first one is to check the first objective and ask us the question, what are the safety rules you want to share? For that, uh, let's say you have found an internal memo, which is uh, the reference uh, relative to workshop safety. And this memo tells you that there is four main parts about safety, the safety of the vehicle, the safety of the operation, the safety of the workspace, and the safety of the operator. And based on these documents, that's where you can create what we call a, a storyboard frame or a script of the module, which is basically the training courses uh, where we add uh, the, the notion that you want to pass. So have you, so do you, so that you have a clear view of uh, the structure of the model and the, 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 the message, the pedagogical message you want to, to tell. But uh, here we are still uh, just knowing that the, 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 the module will be e-learning. And the second part of the process is ask you the question, but what are the e-learning solution uh, that we can use to, to pass those messages? And in my opinion, there's no, there's not just one good answer to this question. It's about um, 
exploring different possibility. And in this case, we can think uh, like, for example, of an explanation video, which can be a video of a, of a workshop where you, where you just point uh, the safety elements and explain uh, how to ensure safety in a workshop. You can also think about uh, an interview of a safety expert, but the problem of this media would be to not have um, uh, a link between the environment that the operators know and, and the modules. So I think that's not quite a, a very good solution. Um, the second possibility is to, to use more classic e-learning as we all know, which is based on infographics with a voiceover and uh, you pass the message uh, with both visual and auditive uh, approach. This can be a good solution for low budget development projects. But in this case, we have the same problem as the interview is that you look, kind of lose the, the link between the environment of the user and, and, uh, and the module. The third possibility would be to use uh, a picture of the works of the works shop so that you keep uh, the, the link with the environment, but you diminish the, the, the budget, uh, the cost of the development. In this case, that's pretty much what we did. We didn't use uh, a picture of the workshop, but we used um, a 3D render um, picture, uh, which is based so on 3D mockup and we recreate the environment of the of the user to to get a better understanding for for him uh, the particularity of this notion is that uh, it is quite simple to explain but it's very important that the user retain uh, the information so that's what we that's why we use uh, this media to to have like kind of nice media to, to catch the attention of the of the training and so here we get back to our storyboard frame and in front of each notion, we have now a clear view of the type of media, media we are using, which is 3D render with an hotspot, uh, an hotspot to, to, to give the content to, to the learner. So this is for the first objective and for the second one, we can, we can ask us uh, exactly the same question. Uh, so the notion to pass is pretty much the same as, as the first objective, so this is good. But for the learning tools, here we have practice and we have e-learning. So for practice and e-learning, the, the first thing that we have in mind is quiz or question at the end of a module, which is, again, good because the, the, the learner is, is obliged to think and to, to practice the, the, th the theory. But it is not um, linked once again to, to the environment. So what we choose to do here is to develop a, visual, a virtual tour, uh, once again based on 3D mockup, and to ask uh, the learner to find out in this uh, virtual tour the different elements relative to security. So that's what we are going to show you. I can show you the model uh, linked to this uh, use case as it is developed. So let's switch to, to the module. And here we find uh, the two parts, the two learning objectives that we just discussed. The first one, the theory one, and the second one, which is the practical one. So let's go to the first one. Here we find our 3D render picture. So let's say that this is an environment that the, the user will know and on this picture, we have hotspots, which give uh, more content about uh, the security measure. And we find out that those four hotspots are the same as the one we, we just uh, saw uh, in, the, in the internal uh, memo. So you click on each of them. And then you have the possibility to go to the second part of this module, which is kind of a an evaluation, but a practical one. And here we have the same type of media, but this is a virtual tour. So you can navigate uh, in, this, uh, in this virtual tour. And the objective here is to check um, all of the points on the left of the screen, uh, which are relative to the four categories that we just saw. And the idea is to, okay, let's say 
you have to uh, check the safety relating to the space and the procedure, which is the last one on the, on the left of the screen. So you have to find out an element that is uh, re uh, relevant to this to these uh, categories. And for example, I think that uh, the port which uh, you can see here uh, should not be here. So I think this is relative to a, a safety uh, safety uh, measure. So we click on it and then we check it on the checklist. Then we can go uh, go back maybe on the on the first view. And we have three other uh, safety measure, which is the safety of the mechanics. So I think this is basically based on, on um, equipment, a security equipment, for example, the shoes. So I click on the shoes and then I click on the left of the screen to uh, check uh, this security measure. Then you have the workspace perimeter safety. And I just saw here cigarettes, which I think is not uh, in this in this place. So I click it and I click on the checklist. And the final one is the safety of the vehicle. So uh, for any maintenance operation, we have, of course, a, a need to, to put the vehicle in a safety position. So I click on the vehicle and then on the checklist. And I have the possibility to validate on the uh, lower right of the screen. So I click it. And it tells me, indeed, I find all the elements uh, relative to security. So this is about the presentation. So to choose uh, several types of media, we have to. Uh, we are re we are currently using this uh, this storyboard frame to have a better view of the structure and of each of the notion you have to pass in the learning. So maybe we'll go back to the presentation, and um, Luca will uh, will perform a, a small presentation of several type type of e learnings. Luca just had a, a small uh, problem with the network. He's going back. And you shall see him right now. Still good to go. You sorry. And back again, sorry, a few, a few technical issues that we didn't have uh, an hour ago. So uh, back to the demonstrations. So there are, as uh, Pierre said, multiple types of the learning, multiple types of uh, resources, means, tools, as you wish to call it. And we're going to present you a few of them. So there is first, the no, that's good. Sorry. Well, the, the connection and we are with the yeah. internet. So uh, uh, let's pray. So the first, the well-known uh, e-learning in, in this very essence, uh, it's quite simple. You have infographics, you have things displaying with uh, little nice effects. Uh, eventually you will get, well, eventually, not always. So sometimes you will potentially have a voice over. So you have indication by voice. And we are going to take this example here. So you can see, well, it's supposed to have sound, but I, I muted it. So we don't have sound over sound. So you have nice little effects, the information displaying on the, on the screen. Well, well, sorry, this one and two, two others are in English. Can you mute yourself back? <laughs> sorry. Uh, there are a few, a few points displaying on the screen, one after the other, to be sure there is no overload of the, 
of the cognitive load. And after that, there is your turn, if he wants to end. And if I, if I put my mouse over the, over the different pads, there is a little indication about the location of the body part I'm hovering. So the ears, uh, venous system, so I think it's supposed to pinpoint the heart, uh, immunity system, etc. So this one is quite simple, as the name uh, implies. So let's focus on something a little more visual, a little more interactive. And you can see here, it's, uh, it's made of different drawings of our designers and graphists. And this one is a little bit like a virtual tour, but with a little less, uh, a little less uh, financial means, we'll say. So let's get to this one. Welcome to LGM Digital. So it is an internal module that we produce for our new colleagues. Uh, there is a little bit of customization. You can see I have to pinpoint my gender to enter my first name and my last name. I validate and I am supposed to discover the, our main site of Elysee Villa Coublet. It's a very, very appealing name. I click on the button of the lift and first floor, here I am. We can uh, find back our little hotspots, our little points of interest. And if we click uh, on one of them, we can have a bit of information. Now we have uh, the meeting with our director. Uh, Laurent Abt. If I click on this point of interest, uh, I have a little video presenting uh, presenting the LGM Digital and the skills we have uh, in the in the company. When you finish one, well, when you when you visit one of the points of interest, there is a little symbol to to be sure you don't go back on it. Well, you can of course go back on it to get the information again, but if there is a condition mechanic, you're free now. So you can you can evolve through through the site and the different uh, the different parts of the site and you can get information about well the pool media, uh, the pool where I'm in. Uh, you can see uh, short videos, descriptive videos, 3D renders, uh, virtual reality, virtual visits or some example of, uh, of the work we do here. So that's a little bit more appealing. There is a kind of red wire in the discovery of the of the of the site. So that's better than the simple thing. We have uh, dedicated graphics. So it's the upper version. We'll say if we go up uh, again, we can see we can see what we will call mediatized content. And it takes back uh, 3D mechanics that we saw in the virtual visit. Uh, I'll show you in a second. But it's still, again, different. We go back on the two parts, theory and practice, learn and verify. So on the first part, you see that it's a completely different, well, completely different mechanic. Um, it's a bit similar to virtual visit, but here I can manipulate the, the 3D model, and I can get to any point of interest to get the information. It's uh, here as well. Uh, there is a condition mechanic that I have to I have to visit every single point. And if you don't want to manipulate the object uh, to find a little the little point of interest that when I first did the, did the module I didn't see, you can use the little bar here to go back and forth onto the different points. Once you visited everything, you can go and verify if you understood everything. Uh, you must obtain at least 70%. I am not even sure I can do everything. And the test is quite long, so I'm not going to going to do every, every question. Uh, here you can see the little 3D animation that is supposed to help you with the question. and put a visual example so you can understand and answer quite better. I don't know the answer for that one. And as I was wrong, it's explaining me where I was wrong and how to correct my, uh, my answer. 
for that one. I remember Pierre told the right answer this morning and uh, I remember it. Well, it's not very complicated information. So the feedback window only tells you, well, you're right or you're wrong. And if I was wrong, you would have told me the right answer. And you can see uh, as you're going through the tests, it indicates you where you are actually. Just, so just, just to be uh, a little more information about this one, uh, this module is about to replay a, a maintenance procedure uh, with a quiz and a video so that um, the learner gets uh, the, the, caution, the caution or I mean the, the step where you need to be careful and he has an action to do. So that's that's the way uh, the quiz was uh, was created. So I thank you Fair and Pierre for this uh, precision. And after the mediatized contents, we go to the well-known and the last but not least, gamified content uh, everybody loves, adults or children, uh, who cares? And with the example of a supply chain module, so there is a little bit of customization. I already filled the information about my name and gender. And as we can see, there are three parts of the supply chain that have issue and we have to make them work again. So make your workplace work again. Uh, I will have to, when it allows me, I will click on one of the areas. Next first and let's go help this guy. So you can see the, the red wire that is quite more present. Well, for this one, it's quite simple, but we have other modules. We can't show you because, well, there are, there are clients we work with that have sensitive data. So we, we will only be able to show you these simple modules, but the gamified mechanics can go way further than that, but that's still a good example. So for this one, I was right. Uh, I have a little feedback explaining me how I was right. I can learn more if I want. Well, personally, that's not my area. Uh, how many methods? Well, I remember the correct number, but I will give the wrong answer. And there are not three, but four uh, great methods. It's saying me what? And when I have finished, I have a little game mechanic, uh, the badges game mechanic, and once I have the three badges, I can go to the next part. Uh, I will not, uh, I will not do that here, but you see, you see the mechanic. Uh, so after all this, uh, after these little example, you can see there is a lot of diversity. There is a very big diversity. Uh, in these different uh, means, these different tools. And if you're curious, uh, there are for the, for the Articulate uh, Storyline franchise, there is a, a website, uh, Articulate Heroes, where people put examples of their e learning. They are personal e learnings, generally, they are not, there is not much uh, professional content uh, on there, but there are tips, uh, help, and uh, and a few examples. And then I'm giving the, the hand back to Pierre so he can explain what about face-to-face. -face. So this, this was the, the core of the presentation, but there were two points I want to discuss uh, with you today. The first one is about face-to-face. -face. Um, we find out that Several of the good practice we are using currently for the e-learnings are also uh, mainly applicable to to face to face. For example, uh, we we recently developed a face to face uh, formation training, uh, including uh, a lot of media, uh, just as we would have done uh, on e-learnings. And this was about uh, explaining in a short time a lot of message and also have a better uh, comprehension for the for the learner of um, complex uh, complex information. So in a in a face to face uh, presentation, we were able to include uh, 3D kinematics video 
to present, uh, I don't know, a, a maintenance operation or, or, or other the, the, funct the functionality of a system. We also can think about uh, for presentation of a, a subsystem, uh, a kind of a small 3D mockup, just as we showed, Lucas showed in, the, in one of the e-learnings to during phase to phase uh, present uh, the composition of the system and so that the learner can see on, on, the, on the 3D model the, the, the piece. So basically some of the, the, the good practice are good to use in phase to phase. Uh, we also know that uh, there is a lot of particularity uh, for phase to phase, such as um, the animation, the, 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 the good price for animation. So this is not quite the same, but some of the practice can be, can be used as well. So this was the first point. And the second one is um, if you followed the, the, the previous uh, webinar, we explained to you that uh, during the analysis, the design phase of AD, uh, we uh, justify and choose uh, the pedagogical mean, which means uh, in the development phase, uh, our clients need to work in a... Okay, so it, it was about... Um, uh, so during the development phase, our client need to work in a, in a limited budget. I mean, uh, they have to master our, uh, their budgets. So we need to tell them before we start how much uh, the learning, the training material will cost. And what I presented you today is that during the development, we are choosing uh, one media for another based on the information we get and on the budget and on the, the population we are, the, the trainee um, backup. So for this, we developed uh, a type of offer where we estimate based on our experience, uh, a volume of media, because uh, we know uh, like for an example, to, to present a system, it is good to have a virtual tour and an animation and a motion design. design. So we make a first estimation of those media. And then uh, this estimation is uh, also linked to a um, financial uh, budget uh, based on work unit. So we have the price of the virtual tour, the price of the 3D animation. And this give us, give, give us an, um, a budget uh, to work in. But what we, the, 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 the main advantage of this method is that if during the development we see that if um, during the development we we, uh, we discover that this virtual tool is not really needed and we mostly need a, a 3D animation, we can switch uh, the work units so that we stay on a master budget, but uh, we also have the, the we guarantee the, the, the pertinence of the, of the pedagogical solution. So that's what, that was the second message. Maybe you can switch Luca to, to the end uh, of the presentation, which is uh, if you have any question, uh, we, we, we are happy to, to answer it. I don't see any question right now on the question tab. <coughs> Maybe I, I will get back to the question I, I got this morning um, in the in the French uh, version of the of the webinar. And somebody asked me uh, this morning if um, what was the the, the main use case of uh, a virtual tour. Um, to answer this question, so. We are mainly working with uh, industrial uh, on the complex uh, systems and the virtual tour is mainly used uh, to either get a discovery of the system, but also on practical mean for the operator or the, main, or the maintainer. For example, we developed uh, for, um, for um, a vehicle, uh, uh, the pre-tour uh, before the before the start. So the the 
the importance about the, those tools is to know where you want to, where, where you need to check something. And it is very important to, to have the right information. So we use virtual tour to simulate uh, this tour. And so that uh, the trainee need to, to perform uh, the, the check before the start. So that's uh, kind of a, a pretty good uh, usage of, of a virtual tool. Um, what uh, also I, I had another question this morning about the, the projection process. Um, indeed, today we didn't discuss about the old processes. Uh, I told you about the, the analysis of the usage of media and we uh, switched to the, the presentation of developed e-learning, but there is a, a, a complementary phase between those two phases, which is the storyboard. And the storyboard is basically recreating the, the learning materials uh, in a PowerPoint, mainly PowerPoint, so that our client uh, is able to to know what we are going to develop and to validate a, a certain amount of, uh, of uh, pedagogical message. So I don't know if you have further question. Otherwise, uh, if, you had, if you do not have question right now, you can always uh, contact us uh, either on uh, LinkedIn or through mail, I think, uh, in the diffusion of this webinar series, uh, there is a contact. So do not hesitate to come back um, and to ask us a question that uh, you didn't have at the moment, and we will be uh, pretty happy to, to answer it. So that's right. Thank you for following this webinar. Don't hesitate. Uh, well, as, uh, as Pierre said, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact us. Do not hesitate to go and watch this replay or one of the previous webinars replay. Don't hesitate to register for the replays that are, for the webinars that are to come. Or if you can't go, if you can't uh, attend them, do not hesitate to watch their replays. Sorry for, well, the connection issues or the fact that uh, no, none of us is, uh, is a bilingual, so it was a little bit complicated for us. So thank you for your patience. Thank you for your attendance. And once again, if you have any questions, do not hesitate. Um, I think that's it. So That's it. I guess that it was been Nico's job to to shut it down now. Thank you, have a nice day and goodbye.